and hello again everyone and welcome back to Delta Green Working Group Phoenix. This particular scenario I call the Heart of Stone and it is being run for the gauntlet. Um, now it has been several weeks since the members of Working Group Phoenix were last on their assignment in Savannah, Georgia where they managed to stop a cannibal cult that was attempting to bring enlightenment to the people of Savannah, which probably would not have worked out well. Um, in the meantime, they've been spending some time at home going about their normal business. And so we will start with, just because you're the first person on my list, we will ask Sharon. Sharon, what have you been doing for the past few weeks um, to either take your mind off of what was happening or to spend some time for yourself or whatever? Uh, you know, I just went home uh, and I was hanging out with my girlfriend, Danielle, um, and chilling with my dog, um, trying to pretend that everything was okay. Uh, I think um, maybe I re reached out to my therapist to get some quote unquote anti-anxiety meds, uh, you know, Xanax or something like that. Okay. And uh, I've been liberally taking those because I have a lot of anxiety because of the brain stuff. Okay. Are you going to, when you talk to this therapist, are you going to tell them the truth about what you saw? Or are you going to um, keep some of the details secret? I'm going to lie my ass off. Okay. And like, I'm going to say that maybe I saw like a really gory, you know, at, in my job, I saw something really gory and, you know, well, actually, I guess I'm, I would guess I would just be like some sort of computer dork, not like an FBI guy to the general uh -huh. public. Oh yeah, you so, are. What's that? You are. I mean, you are actually a um, specialist. Right. Right. But I'm not going to tell everybody I work for the NSA, so. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, maybe I'll just tell her I, I've been having weird nightmares about about brains and they're freaking me out. Okay. Okay. So, um, just give me a percentile roll to see how well this therapist is doing. All right, I can just pick any D100, right? Yeah. Any D100 skill? Well, yeah, but on the, uh, yeah, you can roll any D100 skill. So how do you do it with the, uh, how do you do just a regular D100? Um, oh, in, uh, in roll 20, sorry. Duh. In roll 20, uh, if you look in the area where I'm pinging, somewhere up in that area, there's a um, little sidebar there. The next to the bottom icon should look like a polyhedron. If you click on that, that sure brings up your die rolling. I'm sorry. Where was that? My, I had my character. Left, top left oh, of the okay. screen. Got it, got it, got it. You can also slash roll 1d100. Yeah. Yeah, I tried okay. to give me an error, but 30. You got a 30. Yes, your psychotherapist does, is able to help you. Um, give me a, um, give me a d4. you gain three sanity points back. Okay. However, since you've been spending time with your therapist, you've been neglecting some of your other people. So you have to reduce one of your bonds by one. Oops, sorry, I was muted. I'm going to reduce my old hacker group by one. I'm just okay. going to stay at home and laying very low. Hang on a second. Whoop. Sorry about that. Okay. So we'll go on to Jackie next. Yes. Okay. 
If you need a rundown of your options here, you can fulfill responsibilities, which will strengthen time with your bonds. You can get back to nature, which will reduce your bonds, but will give you sanity. You can establish a new bond, which is what it sounds like. You can go to therapy and either tell the truth or not tell the truth. There are different results from those, but those will also bring back sanity. You can study to improve a skill or a stat. You can indulge in one of your motivations, which will, um, again, help your sanity because you're doing the things you enjoy. You can gain special training, and there's a list of specialized training skills. You can do what they call stay on the case. You can follow up the information you've gotten from the last mission and see if you can find out some more about it. Or you can study the unnatural, but you would have to have some unnatural item to... Mm -hmm. um, so can we form bonds with PCs or only with NPCs? Uh, it's a, probably a good idea. You can form a bond with a PC, yes. Now keep in mind that they may not consider you a bond. Mm -hmm. There is also having things happen to bonds is traumatic. I was going to ask about the potential for backfiring. If it's, yes. You have to form a bond with a PC. There, there is a option that occurs when certain sanity loss occurs where you form a bond with Delta Green, the organization, mm -hmm. and therefore your team, by extension your team. But yes, there are penalties if a bond is injured or killed or whatever. Okay. Um, did I happen to retain that brass or the, you know, like the bronze plaque from the top of the uh, obelisk? You had it with you at one point. I assume you had it when you got when they came to pick you up. Whether you turned it in or not is up to you. I think I'd like to study the and and will uh, I just checked in uh, roll twenty and it still says thirty and unnatural. So did I do I need to reduce that? Yeah, that should have been ten. Okay. Um, so let me fix that. Why not? Why not study the unnatural? Okay. And uh, d does that uh, plaque, you know, that that, that capper count since uh, it affected the obelisk? Yes. Okay. So do I need to make a roll there, or? Um. First, well, you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to make the roll in secret. Mm -hmm. And, um, in fact, I'm going to make it so secret that I'm going to roll physical dice. Wow. Okay. Um, you need to roll a d4 and reduce a bond by that amount because you're spending all your time obsessing over this plaque and looking at things on the internet and that sort of stuff. Okay. So let's see. There's a three. And, uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that my advisor probably what I don't talk to him that much. So let's just uh, reduce that by three. Okay. So that takes uh, my bond with my advisor from six to three. Okay. Uh, do you want me to send you what you discover privately, or do you want me to let the rest of the group hear it? Well, let's have the rest of the group hear it. Okay. I'd tell him any... Well, I would certainly tell Sharon. Um, Jefferson... Jefferson would probably be a tiny bit skipped, a skeptical. Gene might say, what the hell, Jackie? But, you know, better than drinking. Okay. The symbol that is painted on the back 
of the plaque is somehow associated with an entity known as the king. Sometimes the yellow king, sometimes the yellow emperor. It is associated with something called the yellow emperor's taro that seems to have been obsessed, the obsession of a lot of occultists and that sort of thing through history. Um, there seems to be more information about it, uh, but the information about it seems to be something in the, um, seems to be in something called the Red Book. So you know that you need to find something called the Red Book to find out more about this. Awesome. Um, do, does any of this searching give us any idea where we can find a copy of the Red Book? No. It seems to have been one of those hidden books that is being, has been destroyed whenever it shows up. Ah, of course. Esoteric knowledge. Gotta love it. Is that something I could, like, is any of this information that I could search for on the dark net or something like that? Um, you can try if you'd like. Yeah. I mean, that's my one skill, so yeah, sure. But it's an awesome skill. I'm very glad I have it. That's why I picked her. Uh, Which one is it? Sorry. Oh, computer science? Yes. Oof, fail. You cannot find out anything about this book. It seems that it's almost as if people have been deliberately removing mentions of it. Like, is it like, quote unquote, redacted on the web? Or they just like the, the articles show up and they disappear before. So I don't even know that they've been there. Uh, yes, it looks like any mention of it is being scrubbed. I mean, it's almost noticeable by an absence. It's mainly references to Chairman Mao. Yeah, that one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, Gene, what are you up to? I mean, Gene didn't, you know, and it's now part of this conspiracy that's doesn't really sit well with her this whole extrajudicial killing and all of that things but it was weird and Jackie seems so convinced and that was odd right I think she needs to to look into this further I think it's been you know she's I think it would be uh, staying on the case arguably but really I'm looking at the study of the unnatural because what Jean is doing is um taking those constellations uh, and uh, the notes that she's got from uh, the whispered secrets of the shouter in the lake uh, and the ramblings of um, Ashlyn on a tape and she's just obsessing over it and she buys a telescope and she's looking at the stars to try and you know see this constellation that uh, as above so below uh, and yeah I'd like to study the unnatural as well so that I actually believe that some of this stuff is real as opposed to just okay crack crackheads and tinfoil hats. Okay. Let me give you your secret role. All right. Uh, okay. Two things here. First of all, uh, give yourself a D4 in science astronomy mm -hmm. since you're starting to study the scar stars. Okay. Uh, you can now recognize the constellation that you were looking at is the constellation of Taurus. Mm. And the star that seems to be marked in the constellation is the constellation of Aldebaran. Okay. And you will... Um, do you have a cult? I have it at 30%. Okay, give me an occult roll. success. Okay. 
the constellation of Aldebaran is supposed to be the home. There is a star there with a planet called the Lake of Holly, H-A-L-I. And it could be that this is the lake that the Whisperer leaves, lives beneath. Hmm. Interesting. And I see uh, the looks Horse keeps giving me here. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, I, I was specifically looking to raise my own natural score, if that's... Okay. Um, just, just that was that was my okay, studying the natural. Then give yourself using... a. That's right. You said a natural. Give yourself a D four and a natural. Nice. Uh, and I will. Um, I think I lose that from uh, my uh, my Maxim flatmate. Your maximum sanity has to be reduced by that much. Yes. Yeah. I got the the highest, so my maximum sanity now goes down to. Ah, it does it automatically. That's good. Yep. <laughs> How clever this sheet is. Uh, and I lose uh, the, the same number from my bond, I believe. Is that right? Uh, yes, you lose a D4 from a bond because you're um, yeah. dealing... The same D4 or different D4? D different D4. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, you're... you're the same D4. Well, I know why it is. It's because uh, my roommate, Marilyn, uh, I've taken over, like, you know, like my walls are all done on this, like, this is like the diagram up. I've like painted it on the roof of my uh, thing so I can see it when I'm going down. Uh, and when she comes in, I just like push her out of the door hard. And I'm just like, it's work, Marilyn, it's work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And finally, Greg. Uh, yeah, I have a question. So I'm in, I, I want to um, engage with my motivation. Okay. And the motivation is uh, bring down, uh, destroy the cult that I uncovered. So um, I, I don't know how um, like unnatural that was for Greg at that time. Because I played him as someone who is not really had been in uh, contact with the unnatural. So it can just be, you know, he heard it from the patient that there were these sacrifices and he just um, flat out said that, that he's probably hallucinating. But now in the aftermath of what uh, he uncovered, he, wanted, he wants to go back to the old case. Okay, give me a criminology check. That is a failure. Okay. Uh, you're able to go through some old files and correlate some cases that you think are related. Um, one thing you find out is that some, not all, but more than one of the old rundown, basically, tenement buildings that the, these cases occurred in, were all owned by a um, guy named Brad Ringer. He, he's, he's one of those um, buy distressed properties and flip them guys. Again, not all of them, but more than one. Yeah, and I, I assume that Greg has, um, you know, he, he wouldn't uh, put up the murder board in uh, in his house, so he's probably rented some garage somewhere uh, where he, you know, has the all these property things, and then all the red strings end up in the center at Brett Ringer. You mean, you mean sort of like the one we have on the Roll20 board? Yes, right? pretty much that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so all of you have been doing this, and again, it always seems to happen way too early in the morning. You're awake, you're getting breakfast, you know, doing, you know, getting breakfast, taking your shower, whatever, and your phone rings, and it's the office line. Is 
is anybody going to answer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, there's an answer. Okay. Uh, you, it's a call. It's from the um, um, dispatcher at headquarters going, hey, um, need you all to come on in, uh, head down to conference room J. And it says here that we're supposed to tell you that this has something to do with tickets to an opera or something. Uh, yeah, thank you. And hangs up. Okay. All of you will get the same message. Uh, do you do any last minute things with your bonds before you head off? Uh, I tell um, my roommate, uh, Marilyn, uh, I lock the door behind and I say, don't go in there. And it's working stuff. It's classic, you know, it's confidential. Mm hmm. Uh, and I don't think Marilyn's uh, very happy with uh, Jean's uh, ignoring of all of the normal socialization and stuff that she's, uh, you know, all the empty bottle of whiskey that's been sat outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jean leaves it there when she goes. <laughs> okay. I'll call my sister. Duh. Just let her know that I'm going to be out of town for a couple of days. It's one of those periodic, you know, consulting things that pop that pops up. And uh, I'm going to try to keep my voice steady. Okay. Because I'm sort of I'm both excited and apprehensive. Apprehensive because I know it's not good, but excited because it feels like for the first time in a very long time I know that I'm not crazy and there are other people who know that I'm not just completely out of my rocker so and then I'll just head down to the office okay I'm going to spend quality time with my girlfriend and dog, you know, just like extra, <laughs> okay. extra snuggles and whatnot. Yeah. And, and I'd even suggest that I, I pick up Sharon, having picked up on the uh, agoraphobia, like paranoia that she displayed last time. I think, okay. Uh, Jean would pick her up from outside. Cool. You know, uh, I have a ridiculously high human, so I think I'm <laughs> keyed into that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, Greg will finish um, fixing the breakfast um, and, you know, brings it to his daughter's bed and then um, says, uh, Daddy won't be here around for some time, but he loves you very much. And I promise you, Sunday, we go to the playground. And then leaves uh, to the office. All right. Get to your office. You go to the proper location and it's the it's your usual contact it's um Sonia Green standing there again and she's going okay glad all of y'all could make it uh points out where the um coffee and donuts are sorry to get y'all in this up so early this morning but if it's any consolation I've been up even earlier um Here's what we got. Um, if you look in your notes, you should have in your um, handouts your um, briefing and another document. Anyway, she says, we've got something happen nearby today. You're the closest team we have that are cleared for this sort of thing. So let's get started. Some between 4.30 and 5 this morning, a security guard over at Stone Mountain Park was killed. Specifically, he was burned to death. That's bad enough, but his clothing and the other items on his body aren't even scorched. The press is already, and social media is already throwing around the spontaneous human combustion thing. So you can know where this is. Uh, we need to get out of this fast. 
Guy's name's Kenneth Madal. He was a security guard with Eastern Horizon Security. Um, there's a big event going on around the park right now, and they called in an external security team to supplement the group that was already there, the standard security for the park. He did a check-in on his route at 4.30. His next check-in should have been 5, but he did not make it. About 5.15, the other security guard on the same route, a, her name is Karen Vanderman, uh, when she found his remains, she immediately called it in. Um, local authorities showed up within 15 minutes, uh, confirmed what she had found. Since the case is on state-owned property, uh, they immediately turned the case over to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Fortunately, we have a friendly working for us within the Bureau, and they immediately relayed the report to us as well. They pinged me and asked me to bring a team in, and, well, you're here. A little bit of background here. The park's only been open for a few weeks. It's been shut down for most of the past year. Uh, the first thing that is going on at the park right now is an event called the Southeastern Enlightenment Festival. Yeah, a celebration of alternate ways of thought, religion, medicine, and science. They've got big names here working on it. Gwyneth Paltrow was here for the opening ceremonies on it. You know, it's, it's a thing. Uh, now, a lot of people don't like this because, well, you know, a lot of the conservative um, religious types and also academics and doctors are kind of going that we shouldn't be celebrating this kind of thing. But it's the first major event to be held in Atlanta for a long time now because of all the lockdowns and so a lot of people have been going there. Um, they've even been there, the show, they've even been incorporating the festival into the nightly laser shows and that sort of thing they have at the park. For those of you who aren't from the Atlanta area, Stone Mountain Park is one of the largest exposed granite outcroppings in the world. It's about 800 feet above the surrounding terrain. It has a circumference of five miles. It's owned by the state, but it is actually operated by a private group. Um, there's an amusement park there. There's lots of historical stuff there. There's hiking trails there boating, there's a scenic railway that runs around it, there's a cable car to the top of it. It's a pretty big operation. Um, it's also a little controversial in that the side of the park of the mountain has one of the largest stone carvings in the world of the southern heroes from the U.S. Civil War. It has carvings of Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, and um, Jefferson Davis. These are, um, because of the connections with the Confederacy and that sort of thing, there's been a lot of criticism of the state owning this thing and wanting to get rid of it. Uh, there's also as many people wanting the state to preserve it. There is also consideration of replacing it with, or talk of replacing it with a carving of Martin Luther King the civil rights leader, and that is as com controversial as you might think. So between the park itself and the festival going on there, we've got a lot of people who are unhappy with the park one way or another. Because of that, we are, the government is stating that this is, we have to investigate this as possible domestic extremism. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security is taking control. All of you are now officially assigned to Homeland Security for the duration of the mission. Your assignment, your contact within the GBI who you'll be working with is named Jacqueline, Kilpat Jacqueline Kilpatrick. Um, she does not know about the program and you are not to reveal any information about the program or your true motivation for being here to her unless you are confident you can trust her. 
Your assignment is to determine what the cause of Mr. Madal's death was. If it was not a natural death, you need to come up with an explan natural sounding explanation that will prevent anyone from looking any further into this. And if there is an unnatural cause behind it, you need to find that cause and eliminate it. Now I have to ask you to remember your standing orders for all operations. Apply here. And that is it. Do you have any questions? Uh, Jean leaves over to, um, to Jackie and just whispers in her ear. Third priority is obscure our involvement. Leave no trace, Jackie. So if I see you shooting the lock off something in broad daylight, I'm going to pistol whip you like Greg should have done, okay? And I'll whisper back, Gene, you can try. Oh. And I, uh, and I, I think as I lean back, I go, I do it for your own good, Jackie. Beatings will continue until morale improves. That's seriously what we're going with here. And wait I until we, wait, wait until we get deeper into Del Agreed. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I think my only question for the actual briefing is: um, Do we know of any other? Do we know of any anything similar? Uh, you had quite a, you know, you knew you seemed to know of previous things with the uh, the previous case. You had deeper connections. Is there anything here? Uh, we've got nothing here. Um, spontaneous human combustion is basically all we need to know at this point. Um, there are. We're not sure how this could have happened. We have we have seen a similar case of this before, but that involved a meteorite strike, and there does not seem to apply in this case. Okay, it's probably Gwyneth Paltrow's fault. I mean, seriously, have you seen the crap that she spews? It's just, yeah, right. Hey, Jackie, I thought you were into that thing. Like when I heard Gwyneth Paltrow, I thought. Jackie has these scandals, right? Maybe he smelled her her uh, special candle, and he Greg, exploded. Look, you you have kids, so be, just because of that, I will not send you vagina scented candles from Gwyneth Paltrow, because if you didn't have kids, you'd be getting an, you'd be getting those delivered to you tomorrow. Uh, Greg is at, in, at the, um, you know, is eating uh, obviously a donut uh, and, and just spits it out when uh, Jackie is mentioning when it held Rose vagina. Uh, Anyways, let's let's get to the case, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to uh, have a look at uh, Jackie as like a professional counselor. Does it look like she has had like a drinking she was on a drinking binge lately mm. nope she, uh, she made her check when she had that last drink so at the moment she's under control yes. although isn't Jackie currently at minus 20% due to alcoholism until she only indulges when it, her only, it, only if it flares up oh that's how that works cool I did think it was a major penalty to always be having to no. take a drink and, yeah no, if it triggers, she has it unless she can repress it again. Cool. Um, now, the fact that she is alcohol... Now, normally you get an actual bonus for drinking for certain things. But since she's an alcoholic, she can't because that she just gets the penalty. Hmm. Well, uh, you want to ride with me, Sharon? Yeah, let's do it. Sorry, mute. <clears throat> yeah, I'm in. Yeah, and I, uh, I look at Greg and I look at Jackie meaningfully, to, like keep an eye on that one. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Greg just uh, pockets one or two of the other uh, donuts. Okay. Oh, 
You know, actually, let's swap it up. I, I think I go with Jackie, sorry, because I, I think on the way over, uh, I will say that, you know, you were, you know, you were right, Jackie, but, you know, if we get, if we blow this whole thing by being sloppy, then what happened to Ashlyn and his friends, it'll happen to us too. You get that, right? Honestly, I thought that was going to happen to us last time. Yeah. Just saying, be careful, you know? We're not just trying to cramp your style, but we've got to keep our cover. Uh, yeah, and Greg has kids. You know, they don't need to find... Their, their dad doesn't need to die in an unexplained car accident or something like that. Yeah. I mean, me, I'm not even sure my sister would miss me at this point. But... And uh, I think Jean takes her eyes off the road for a second and then just, you know... Reaches out a hand and squeezes Jackie's, uh, and then on to, back onto the road. Uh, and yeah, um, I think we've had our little character moment there. Okay. <laughs> I love how you did that. You made that gesture with your left hand, like we were driving in the UK. Yes, I did completely. Yeah, that's okay. We knew what he's talking about. Oh, a moment of empathy. All right. So where are you going exactly? <laughs> uh, well, Stone Top, right? Uh, to the uh, well. So we've got the victim. I guess he's actually at a morgue somewhere, yeah, he, right? Yeah, he, he's at the morgue. Yeah. Um, Greg I'll push to is, check out the body. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I'll go with you to check out the body. Um, Sharon, shall we check these weird cult? Can you get us some information about them, and then we just drive to the festival and ask ask well, some. Well, maybe you should make contact with our uh, agent Jacqueline Kilpatrick. Oh, that that is also true. Oh, yeah, sure. ask her. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, <clears throat> we check in, and but on the way to uh, to the meeting. Uh, maybe Sharon can check uh, this weird organization. More of the same? Computer science? Uh, sure. Actually, you can get a lot of information just off the top for free. Oh, I don't need to? Um, well, I'll do a deep dive. Okay. See, well, here's what, you, here's what you get for free. Um, the um, Southeastern Enlightenment Festival is put on by a organization called Enlightenment Media. They are a umbrella organization that covers a lot of, you know, public access type TV shows, specials. Um, they have several book publishing brands, um, outline of products, uh, mostly um, aromatherapy and homeopathic type things. They sponsor a number of businesses around the country. Um, they also put on a number of these basically trade shows for the um, alternative medicine types. You know, your homeopaths, your aromatherapy people, crystallography, you know, audiology, that sort of stuff. Um, acupuncture, chiropractic, you know, anything that is considered left of normal medicine or science they cover. Um, it does have some in crossover with things like the um, UFO and crypto um, zoologist type things, but mostly it is the lifestyle type stuff. Um, you know, meditation, yoga, you know, you know, relaxation therapy, that sort of thing. So what you're actually having here is, again, it's more of a trade show. Uh, normally this would be held in some place like a big convention center or something, but because of the way things are going, they're holding it outdoors this year. Um, they're basically set up in one of the main parking lots. Everybody has these little booths and tents and that sort of thing. And um, they've opened it to the public, which the park likes because they get charge admission fees. So. All right. Can I do a deep dive? Sure. And 
I'm on the wrong tab. There we go. Got it. 50. Okay. Uh, yeah, the guy in charge of the um, Enlightenment Media is a man named Walter Harris. Um, the guy who is currently running the um, local, um, who is in charge of this local version of the festival, is another man named Anthony Manther. They seem to be the ones in charge there. Uh, the liaison from the park is named Frank Collins. Would I get any more background info on uh, the, the, the guys who run the show? Um, sure. Uh, the guy in charge, he um, actually does not have a degree. Um, you know, he um, claims to have learned a lot of his stuff by traveling in Europe. Um, he took a gap year after high school, uh, found out a bunch of stuff, came back to the United States. He started on the lecture circuit. Um, this is, um, excuse me, this is Harris. Um, he started out on the lecture circuit, um, talking about, you know, the mind opening properties of, um, you know, food and drink. He's actually one of the people who, he's very big on juice cleanses and that sort of thing. Um, intermittent fasting, that sort of thing. Uh, he believes that partially starving yourself periodically puts your body into survival mode and therefore kicks your brain into high gear and allows you to reach higher levels of consciousness. And by intermittent fasting and only drinking the essentials, you know, getting all your... Um, all your nutrients through um, juice and liquid, um, you eventually put your body into a higher state of being that we have lost with our modern society. Um, that, anyway, that was his shtick. Um, he published several books on it, um, had some trouble getting some of his books published, and so started his own publishing company. Um, found that other people were also not getting a lot of um, publishers to take them seriously and started um, inviting them to his publishing company. He expanded it to multimedia through the web, podcast, um, television shows, infomercials, that sort of thing, and has gradually come to be a fairly well-known name in this field. He's considered a huge advocate for alternate ideas. Um, the guy who's in charge of the local place, Anthony Manther, he doesn't seem to be so much, although he seems to be a follower, he is not actually active in the field himself. He is more of a general event organizer. It looks like he just, um, he's more the one who made the connections for getting them into Stone Mountain and that sort of thing. Um, although he does seem to think this was a good way of getting um, a lot more attention to the field. Well, we got ourselves a crackpot, I think. I, uh, <clears throat> I think it's interesting. No, no offense, Sharon. No, yeah, no, no sweat. Um, something I find interesting is that this is the, there's more weird food related stuff going on here. You think? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's the first thing that popped in my head. I have no idea if there's any, like, you know, line through. But, duly noted. Well, let's check on... Uh, hold on. Let's check on uh, Agent Kilpatrick first. And then we need to give uh, this Harris guy a visit. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. You all show up at, so I guess you're assuming you're going to GBI headquarters? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the body itself is actually in the DeKalb County morgue. It's not at GBI. So these are two different places. Yeah, so that's where Gene and Jackie are heading Correct. to. Correct. I'm just, in case it becomes important. Um, okay. You show up and um, introduce yourselves, show your Homeland Security IDs, 
and um, they is the of official story that FBI is taking over or what? Homeland Security. Homeland Security. Yes, they are considering this a case of domestic extremism, or the possibility of domestic extremism, and technically you're here to rule that out. You know, it's just that we don't want to, you know, after the last few weeks, we don't want to miss another one. Yeah. Um, so this is all, um, you know, standard procedure, Miss Kilpatrick. There's no... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, she'll she'll welcome you in. And she said, her first comment is, I really hope we don't need you people. If If we can talk off the record i think this is uh, you know this is just a minor case there's there's some misunderstandings but obviously we need to rule out that it is uh, that it has a terroristic uh, background so yeah well i mean the reason we even brought that up at all is i mean if the guy had just been shot you know fine you know it would have been thursday but um i mean he was burned I mean, badly. And how does that even happen? I mean, I could understand, you know, he was wearing a, he was wearing a nylon jacket. Um, if he had dropped a cigarette or something in it, I mean, it could have set that on fire or something, but the jacket wasn't even melted. I mean, it was just... It's just so weird that... It's almost, all I could think of is that someone caught him, killed him, and then dressed him back that way just to try to freak people out. But who would do something like that? Yeah, good question. Um, my theory is still, it is just uh, probably disturbed. Uh, individual that we will find uh, as soon as possible. Uh, have the the next of kin be informed? Uh, yes, um, his um, he has a family here in town. We've notified them. They um, honestly they identified the body based on his clothing, um, mm. and we've got a check in right now for dental records because that's really all we have to go on. And the uh, the employer of uh, the guard? Um, yeah, Eastern Horizon Security. Um, they're based here in Georgia. They're a relatively new company um, with all the, you know, you know, a lot of people are getting more and more concerned about crime over the past year when a lot of businesses were empty. Um, there was a lot of demand to have more people watching empty offices since there weren't employers that it weren't employees there. So a lot of new security companies popped up. They're one of the newer ones. They've only been around for about 18 months and they've um, built up quite a name for themselves. But, you know, I, I think because they're cheap, but, you know, I question how well some of their people are trained. But sometimes you just need a warm body there to steer someone, scare someone away. Uh, Greg will check his uh, notes. And there's um, Karen Fenderman. Uh, have you asked her about um, what she saw? Uh, yeah, she was going through their routines. Basically, they had several routes. Um, she was walking the area down near the mountain itself. It's a loop around where the... It's the picnic grounds where everybody sits and watches the laser show. It's down near the speakers and the stage and the projection booth and that sort of thing. And they've just been doing the route. You know, that's actually not even near where all the booths are set up. It's just <coughs> another part of the park, mainly to make sure nobody's camping out down there. So Fenderman took another road, uh, another route, obviously. Uh, no, they were on opposite ends of the same route. They were walking a circle. Oh, okay, but but they but they were on opposite together. ends of it. Mm -hmm. um, there are placards or little posts with little QR codes on them at locations, and they 
they do check in by phone. They scan oh. the QR code with their phone to indicate that yes, they are there. That's actually have we checked his phone? Yes. We have his phone and, here. And so his exact location uh, let's see. He had done he had done his check in at one end of the route at about four thirty. His next check in should have been at five at the opposite end of the loop, but he did not check in there. And the last check-in was obviously near the, the place where his body was found, right? Uh, he was actually closer to the other end. But um, when Miss Vanderman was on her um, loop, she just found him lying in the middle of the path. Uh, and could you indicate for me on the, on the map, if there's like a map around, where... This would be the so this would be in sight of the laser show, I assume. If you look at the oh. conspiracy board, I'm pinging it. Nice. Uh, and you should have a bigger, is... you should have a bigger version of that map in your handouts. Oh yeah, map overview. Let me have a look. Um, and can you ping it again? Because I was too slow. All right. Cool. Oh, that is near this the, the carvings, right? Yes, it's basically under the carvings. Probably why we thought it might have a political background, but uh, again, yeah. That, All right. Oh, oh go on. Uh, is that train a commercial train, or is that like a tourist train that kind of circles around the mountain? It's a tourist train. It's a scenic rail. Oh, okay. All right. It's made up to look like an old west train. You know. Got it. Atlanta actually yep. owes, Atlanta has a long history with railroads. We actually owe our existence here to the railroads before we could build tunnels or whatever through the Appalachians. Trains needed out of the Appalachians had to go down along the mountains so they could get a point to turn around and go back up the other side. The point where they turned around is used to be called Terminus. Now we call it Atlanta. <laughs> um, all right. So I think we will um, uh, have a couple of questions for Miss uh, Fenderman uh, and then check on the uh, to, uh, Eastern Horizon, maybe, and then go to the park. So uh, any kind of, uh, if anything comes up, uh, he hands uh, his card. Please don't hesitate to call me. Um, you know, I would appreciate if um, this is um, not advertised in the media. Like, if you get any kind of question, it is probably uh, the act of an um, an individual with uh, probably psychological problems. Is my guess. Uh, yeah, that's my guess too. Although I wish they could do, we get, they get too many crazies from both sides over the park. I think, I think they should tear that mural down and put nothing in its place. Give nobody a reason to. Can, can I ask a question? Um, are there any, uh, are there any like extremist groups like KKK or, you know, some white power group that this is like a big focus um, is there, you know, or, uh, you know, on the, you know, on the, the non, uh, you know, non-fascist side? Um, yeah, there are several. In fact, you know, th there's a, there's the main group is a group called the Georgian Sons of the South. Um, they actually want to get the whole thing declared a national historic preserve. In fact, they don't even like the amusement park and all being over there. Um, you know, they almost want to make it like a, you know, major historical pilgrimage place. That's one extreme. The other stream is, you know, the anti, uh, the Antifa people who are warning, you know, we want it down and if we have to, we'll take it down ourselves. So. Yeah, we get both. Like I said, 
it would be a lot better off if, you know, I mean, I go hiking there a lot. You know, I, I hate it, I having to walk past those groups of protesters every day. You know, just take the whole thing down so we don't have to worry about it. Are there protests every day, almost? <sighs> Most weekends, yeah. Uh, That's uh, one what? of the reasons we had the security is there, making sure nobody's camping out there overnight or anything. Uh, what, di what day is it out of character? Uh, let's call it a Friday. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Actually, take that back. It's a Wednesday. I okay. Wasn't, I wasn't thinking of my own timeline, but thank you. <laughs> um, so we will. We obviously have to follow um, the potential of like a, a political background to that uh, murderer. Although, again, this will be a low key. It's just to um, make sure that it's uh, it is not a, a terrorist attack. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you, and. Um, you know, we will inform you as soon as we wrapped up the investigations, which will happen very soon, I think. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, keep Sharon. Me, keep me informed in the loop. Um, if there's any th information we can get from y'all, all, you know, let us know. We'll tell you whatever we find. But right now, we pretty much have nothing. Uh, I, I like the working theory of somebody killed him, burnt him. That, well, I don't know. Probably um, drugged him first, then took off his clothes, burnt him, and then took the clothes on again. Uh, sick individual. Um, that seems to be the most um, logical, like working theory. I'm sorry, this is. Just it's the in only. My head. It's the only theory I can come up with. I mean, how else could that have even happened? Exactly. And and they would have had to have done it in... There was a 45 minutes between the time we knew he was last alive and the time he was found dead. Was there any traces of his blood found anywhere else in the park? Uh, we haven't searched the park for blood. Has I mean, it it's a big blood? park. Right. Has it rained? No. Since then? That might be something that we want to look for. Yeah, it's been three or four hours at this point, so. Oh, okay. Oh, no, six hours at this point, so. All right. So I think Sharon and I will go to the park next. Okay. Can we, well, Greg, what do you think? Should we call in the locals to see if we can find any traces of his blood? I mean, like, if somebody did kill him first and set him on fire, we might have a place where he was you know, the ground zero of where he got killed. Uh, when we have left the office, uh, Greg will say, well, we don't know. Maybe it was some kind of weird, you know. I don't have to mention the brains, Sharon, right? I um, <laughs> but uh, I, I think my working theory for Miss Kilpatrick is a lot of bullshit. What, her theory is yeah. bullshit? I think so. Yeah. They're, they're, these guys, they, you know, they, they don't they don't know shit. They ain't seen what we've seen, you know? Right. So, you know, that's what I think, you know, I mean, between you and me, who knows? Maybe it's a bunch of like, you know, the, some crazy cult that did some human sacrifice and then set his ass on fire so it didn't leave any evidence. That's why I want to, like, see if we can find blood. I don't know. It could be a ritual. I'm... I'm... I get a bad vibe from these, uh, what are they called? The Harmony people. Um, well. The Enlightenment. The Enlightenment. So let's check the um, the place where he was found. Uh, maybe we can talk to Vendor Man and then uh, check out these crazy people. Which ones? <laughs> they're, all, <laughs> they're all crazy around here. <laughs> the Enlightenment. All right. Yeah, I think um, I'd like to deep dive on Georgia Sons and then the local chapter of the Antifa as well, if that's possible. And it doesn't have to be right now. Okay. 
Okay, well, we'll switch over to the people who are heading over to the coroner's office. Yeah, uh, you know, we pull up, uh, I, you know, show my badge, uh, consultant, Miss Taylor here. Um, I'm here to see, uh, the body. I mean, oh, oh, we, we weren't expecting anyone from the federal government. Uh, Homeland Security? <laughs> yeah. You know, with the tensions, uh, and especially with last year's events, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. You know, we get, we, get, we get a lot of those, you know, we get a lot of those weirdo types at the park. They get all bent out of shape about the statue up there, you know? I mean, oh, come on, it's history. Leave it alone, you know? Yeah, it, I mean... It, 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 uh, it was uh, over 100 years ago. Why are you still upset about it? I, I guess, yeah. I'll uh, I'll mention that to my British friends next time, huh? Okay. We yeah. can we can give up on the whole Fourth of July thing. Hey, I just I I, I kind of like <laughs> snort a little bit, mm. uh, and I just say, well, yeah, it's a shame that someone built that into the mountain, but yeah, you're right. Anyway, we're here just to you know try and get this sorted, least drama as possible, right? Uh. Anyone had a look at the body yet? Uh, yeah, Karn is working on it. Uh, uh, Landrail's in today. He should be able to... Need me to let you... He's... And are the clothes here? What? Uh, are the victim's clothes here? Oh, yeah. Like he clothes. was transported in the clothes. So we'd have him. His possessions would be up at the... Um, I guess police headquarters has it. Okay. Well, if you could buzz us through. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I'll let him know you're coming back. Okay, you come back. Um, it's a... The room they direct you to, it's a surprisingly young man in there. Um, has a French accent. He, he's going, um, yeah, can I help you? Hi, I'm... Uh, yeah. yeah, Special Agent Oliver, Consultant Taylor. Uh, we're here to... Um, to observe the, the autopsy? Oh, uh, which one? Well, of, uh, whatever's left of, uh, poor Mr. Medal. Medal? Oh, yeah, um, well, I got this overdose I'm checking on right now. It's gonna go to him next, you know. Stuff comes in overnight, so. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know, we've got... <sighs> You know the mess up at the the, the top with the, the statues and everything, right? And oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I so mean, it, it, it I, really I can, appreciate I can, if we could push it up a bit. I I, mean, the the overdose, I appreciate I mean, it, but I mean, I just take a quick look at the body. Oh sure. You know, I mean, I'm down here. From, I'm here from Canada. You know, I um left the RECMP because I thought I could progress faster in the states. That's what they tell us, right? And Man, you people are still trying to work out stuff we worked out 50 years ago. Tell me about it. But, hey, uh, if you could wrap up what you're doing now. Uh, uh, sure. Jackie and I will wait for you in the room. Um, uh, if, but if He's could... actually, um, are either of you two doctors? Close enough. Okay, okay, fine. Um, he's in drawer four over there if um you want to take a look at him absolutely yeah I'll, I'll get a i'll get one of the texts to come in and help you move him to the table i'd really appreciate that okay and then, uh, do, do you have a is there any chance you have a more private room i we, we really want to do kind of a fine tooth comb <sighs> thing on this just just because homeland is worried that it might be some sort of terrorist bullshit of some sort or another <laughs> Terrorist, terrorist guy wouldn't have killed some random guy security guard at night. They do something during the day to make sure people saw it. You know, you'd think so, but we're already talking about people who were... I mean, what was it that the... Uh, and I look at you. What, what was it that, the, that uh, the person who showed us in here said? Something that happened a hundred years ago? Yeah, something. something uh, yeah, well, civil, like relitigating the past. Yeah, well, people live their civil war in this state, you know? Yeah. 
Um, but no, this is the only room we've got. I mean, you know, it's just the county. We don't have a whole lot of money for this sort of thing. I mean, I, I don't think I, under I, don't I understand. Let's uh, let's focus on what's in front of us. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll be out of your hair as soon as we can. Okay. Yeah, they have a second table, but this is the only room. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I imagine, well, how much of a body are we looking at? Yeah. Okay. First thing that gets you when you open the drawer is the smell. Because the first thing you think of is somebody's been barbecuing. Um... The second thing that hits you is the clothing has been removed from the body. Is that this is not what you would have thought when you thought burns. This is not red flesh and peeling skin. This looks like something that spent 12 hours in the smoker. So it's not like... When you say in the smoker, then does that mean that it's like slow cooked? Yes. Like as opposed to yes. burned like a hot fire. Like yes. Quickly. Okay. So that makes no sense whatsoever, uh, given the time frame that we're looking at. Yeah. Is yeah. Uh, so the skin I, isn't blackened or any charred or anything like that. Uh, the skin is falling off. Imagine, uh, imagine what a snow, slow cooked barbecue brisket would look like, and that's what this looks like. If it were a human, sure. Yes, I, I just had that for Sunday lunch today. Yeah, uh, congratulations. Yeah, I'll, make a, I'll make a sanity roll, I think. For yeah, about this point, y'all should be needing to make a sanity roll because hmm? the training uh, pays off. All righty, and then sand. So that's where it's, oh, there it is. Top left. And then no modifier. Okay. You're good. You're looking at this going, man, that's messed up. I've seen worse. Yeah. Uh, Gene definitely has not seen worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, first yeah. time looking at bodies like this, Gene? I mean... The first time I'm looking at a body that looks like this after 45 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, so, Jackie, do you want to lead the examination? Oh, why not? Uh, you've... And, and I look over at the uh, other corner and say, uh, I hate to even ask, but do you have, uh, well, barf bags, just in case, you know, Gene's a little less used to this. He's, he doesn't really look up from the body he's working on, he just points to a sink. Hmm. I kind of shrug and, oh, there you go. And, uh, what the hell? Let's dig into it. Um. Now, can I do this with my either archaeology or anthropology? You can do... Anthropology is more cultures and that sort of thing. So it does... Am I actually perhaps the best one for this? If it's forensics could teach forensics us something? Forensics can do it, yeah. Forensics, medicine, biology, that sort of thing. Well, I have zero in medicine, uh, six in biology, zero in forensics. Uh, I have thirty percent in forensics. You I mean, we can, can do all, this, you and then we we'll ask the coroner to do it. Just well. give me a biology check, just in case. Oh, what the hell? Why not, right? Why not? Nope. I was close. Nope. You do know enough. You know, you do have enough biology to know that. Yeah, this was not. Someone was doused in gasoline and set on fire. This yeah. was someone was put over a heat source for a long period of time. Yeah, because the gasoline would have caused charring and blackened. I mean, there'd basically be nothing but bone and sort of blackened charred bits. On right. Uh, Gene, looking at it, uh, you can reinforce that. There is no evidence of 
um, an accelerant of any type. There is no evidence of an ignition source. Um, it literally is what you would expect if you stuck a body in a barbecue grill for a while. But it seems as though the heat, rather than say coming from within, right? Like there's the the external, the exterior of the skin is marked okay. in the same what, way what that a, a what you get on I got, your um. I got five percent of my forensics. Uh, so, so. The core of the body you can get a thermometer and do some tests the core of the body is warmer than the surface mm, so it may be radiated out in outwards from the inside mm. then yep. okay uh um i mean it feels as though a slow cooked body in this killed in this unnatural fashion that's probably you know what we've confirmed here right um there's, there's very little else I, I can imagine remaining from uh mr metal um teeth earrings anything like that the teeth are still there the skeleton teeth appears to be intact uh there was no earrings or anything like that um any personal belongings has been removed and is a different locker and all the limbs are present correct correct can we see any evidence of organ removal no the body um, seems to be intact, falling apart, but otherwise intact. Well, I mean, as it would be if it's slow-cooked brisket. Yeah. I um, step back from the table and look at Jackie uh, and Jean. Um, the question is, you know, like I, whisper, I lean in and whisper, you know, neither of us is going to be able to find out what's in his stomach, Anything like that? We can call over a friendly Canadian friend over there, but he's going to put together what we put together. Or we can just make it look like what we did, that we did the job and sign off on the paperwork. Do you really think we're going to learn anything else from what's in his stomach? I mean, is he stuffed like a Thanksgiving turkey? I mean, did somebody try to make pate out of his organs? I mean, I don't know, but know? like, do you know, they were taking some of that, that yellow stuff. We know that things like, I don't know, it comes from the inside. That's all I'm saying is, and I, she bites her lip and looks over at a uh, friendly Canadian, you know, I mean, even if you find Screw it. Hey. Hey, sorry, I didn't catch your name. Uh, Albertine. Albertine, uh, yeah. Albertine Lembrard. Uh, and Jackie gives it, I mean, Jean gives uh, her winning smile, you mm. know, uh, and um, says, uh, you know, I'm not really dressed for the full deal. Uh, we've had a look. Do you think you could, you know, do the usual on the brain, the organs? Uh... Yeah, sure. Like I said, as soon as I finish this, uh, this one looks like a standard overdose, but... Well, essential weight, right? Uh, give me a persuade and don't fumble. This is a normal failure. Oof. He goes, oh, okay, fine, fine. And he comes over mumbling something about feds throwing their weight around. Uh, do you want me to wait on this or just send you the report? Oh, we're, we'll stay we'll, here. We'll, st we'll watch, but, you know, Canadian schools are so much better. Of course. McGill, thank you very much. It's like cleverly yeah, I kind of wish I'd gone there. It's like cleverly named the one college I could think of in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Canadians. Um... Anyway, um, we're in about 90 minutes in. Do we want to take our bio break before sure. we switch back yeah. to the other team? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Well, everyone, we will see you back in about five. Okay, and we're back live again. So, um, y'all are waiting for the autopsy to complete.
while Landra is doing that. Um, so back to Greg and Sharon. What are you all up to? Um, Sharon, what do you think? Uh, shall we check out the, uh, the crime scene and talk to the uh, Enlightenment people? Um, do you want to go talk to the Enlightenment people? I'd like to take a look at the uh, at the parking lot and see who's selling what, and then see if I see anybody who's like an extra screwball shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds about right. Or actually, why don't why don't we both go to the? Why don't we do both? I'll go with you first for the interview, and then we'll go check out the parking lot. Okay. So we, we drive up to the park. Yeah, it's about 20 minutes away at this point. So You get up the park. There's a place at the gate where you um, pay to get in. But y'all can show badges and they'll just probably wave you on through. I mean, it's kind of not a secret at this point that someone died at the park overnight. Yeah, but I think Greg will just pay. Okay. Okay. So you pay and go on in. Um, and then is there some kind of like major tent? Uh, there doesn't seem to be a central tent. Um, if you look at the map area, and I'm not sure I can ping the um, local map. Basically, this parking lot here is where all the tents are set up and pavilions, that sort of thing. So y'all are going to have to park in this parking lot over here and then walk over. This is the little historical area, shops, and that sort of thing. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we walk over the, the parking lot um, see if there's like an information booth where they sell or like um, hand out flyers. Uh, yeah, you can find one of those. There is a, you know, kind of a central booth. They have like a little map of where all the booths are and that sort of thing and who all is here. And there's a schedule for when they're going to be doing talks down on the main stage and all this kind of stuff. Is Harris on the list of people who are supposed to speak? Uh, he spoke at the opening at the opening on Monday. Today is Wednesday. Uh, so I will ask the person who is operating the booth. Um, uh, I, I was really um, moved by this speech by uh, Mr. Harris. Um, is it possible to? Um, to get an interview, or like to talk to him. Oh, are you with the press or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, um, he's probably out walking the floor right now, but um, we can let him know you're looking for a Mr. Uh, Jefferson, correct Jefferson. Okay, cool. Do you have a card or something we can have him contact you? Um, I'm, um, I don't have a card. Maybe I need a, like an alias or something. We Um, we don't believe in cards. It's so patriarchal. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Uh, well, just leave me your number and we'll have him get in touch with you. Yeah. Greg will write down his number. Okay. Um, and then the, um, I assume that Jean and Jackie um, informed us about the state of the body. Yes, like I said, unless you specifically tell me you're keeping information secret, I assume everyone knows everything. Um, this makes life easier. Mm-hmm. I mean, as crazy as it sounds, oh, I mean, the, the flyer, what does it um, focus on? Like there's improvement of the mind? Uh, Basically, the whole shtick behind it seems to be that, you know, everybody follows what seems to be conventional wisdom. But 
why is it conventional and is it really wisdom you know <laughs> you need to open your mind to other possibilities not other ideas these people here are dedicating their lives to helping you understand the greater cosmos and greater possibilities of your mind and your body and your life you know you get the idea it goes on yeah. like that for a while and uh does it say anything about like um practice the practice of these um teachings uh it's actually they're not pushing anything specific here themselves they're just bringing all these different people together like i said think of it as a trade show oh okay okay okay, okay. so um yeah we we will walk over to what was the other part with the um something like historical buildings you said uh yeah there's a bunch of historical buildings this is kind of where the amusement park is that's sort of there's a lot of shops and that sort of stuff uh yeah i mean on the map that we have that probably there's indicate where the body was found uh the map you okay you know where the body was found it's not yeah. on the handout they give you obviously no, no. Yeah, it's over near the mountain, near that, um, and I just clicked the wrong button. It's over near the mountain, near that, um, near where that little lake in front of the... Yeah, the mural is. Um, yeah. Yeah, we checked that out as well. Okay, as you start getting down into that area, you run into some police tape and a board-looking... Um, Stone Mountain Cop standing there. Yeah, here we do show our uh, badges. Huh. Um, wow, Homeland Security, man. Yeah, it's a routine case, I think. You know, the high ups think it might be political extreme, uh, extremists. That's all we need out here, is for them to start. <laughs> yeah, uh, the crime scene team's still down there. Uh, once they've cleaned up, we're going to open this thing back up. You know, the park's already upset that their people aren't getting to go do their daily walk around the lake here. So, well, you need to have your walk, right? Yep. And uh, Greg will, you know, approach the crime scene. Okay. There are two people there. Um, they're standing there. They've got, you know some specimen bags and that sort of thing with them but they're just sort of standing there talking to each other mm -hmm. uh when i'm smoking <laughs> i go to the one uh to the two of them um show yeah. my badge okay they go this area is oh okay uh yeah how can i help you officer uh jefferson yes um yeah so can you um update me on what you found <sighs> didn't find anything I mean they asked us to check the area um, no sign of a struggle uh, looks like he just fell where he was standing uh, no no drag marks I mean look at the this is gravel I mean if a body had been dragged around you would have seen drag marks in it nothing and, here um, they said it's a fire look at the grass green growing not even scorched or wilted oh interesting so the place where the body is found the the ground is not scorched no. in any way no uh is no. it like um, the body the body was still wearing its clothes when we got here i mean yeah neither were the clothes indeed um greg stands exactly where the the pins are mm -hmm. and looks around what 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 is there to be seen um you're kind of near the side of the lake. Uh, you can see what looks like a... Um, closer to the mountain, if you look at the map, you can see this. Close to the mountain, there's a lot of trees and that sort of thing right around the foot of the mountain. Um, but you can look down a um, path that seems to lead all the way to the mountain, the base of the cliff itself. Um, it doesn't appear official. Like I said, it's just worn through the grass. And you just happen to be in line with it, standing here. Okay, there's a trail up the mountain. Yeah, I guess people, people, honestly, I think people are there to take a bathroom break, but you know. 
Um, and then he turns around and looks south, if, if you will. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in straight um, line of sight? Uh, you can definitely see the um, projection booth for the laser show and the big speakers and that sort of thing for the um, show. Greg takes a photo of that. And past that, that, you can see the main part of the... Yeah, if you look well, at the... Sure. If you oh, look well. at the picture here, the actual photo at the top right on the conspiracy board, um, mm -hmm. basically you're on a trail that winds around the side of that grass. Can you click that one more time? Sorry. Top top right corner. Right here. So is it is it even possible to get on the cliff? Seems really steep. Uh, from here, no. You would. Um, some people, they get permission and do rock climbing up it. The actual walking trail is off on the um, west end. Uh, so. Greg will check the trail, obviously. Okay. On the map you're on, there's a... Um, that map is actually um, oriented so that north is down, by the way. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Um, yeah, you're... So, do you want to ask anything more of these forensics people? Sharon? Um, no, I'm all right. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me neither. Thank you for your help. Okay, well, we're just, about to, we're just about to close down here. We didn't really find anything, but, you know. Do you have a card we can get from you? Yeah, Is sure. You? Thank you. You know, we we had to stay here and look for what we found, because if we came back and just told the boss that didn't find anything, they'd say, mm -hmm. you were only there for five minutes. Well, there's, you... there's nothing here. And you didn't check further around? Did you go up the trail, down the trail, anything like uh, that? No. There, I mean, there's dozens of square miles of park here. Why should we, you know, we went about 20, 30 yards in any direction and couldn't find anything. That sounds thorough. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and then we check the, the trail where it leads to. Okay. You mean that little foot trail? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it leads... Like people said, like they said, it leads right up to the side of the mountain itself. Uh, there's a good deal of graffiti and that sort of stuff here. And yes, it smells like some people have been coming back here and taking, you know, a um, bio break off the trail. The um, graffiti is anything like obscure or I don't know, symbolic. Um, there's nothing that looks, you know, looks like some, you know. Just taggers have been down here. People have put their names in it. A few people have carved names into the side of the rock. Anything uh, political that we can milk afterwards if we want to blame it on the sons of Georgia? Um, yeah, somebody's drawn a Nazi symbol here. I make a photograph. That's obviously related. Yeah. Right, Sharon? You're muted, Sharon. Oh, there you go. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, looks like it to me. Okay. Political um, extremism. Both Case closed. Oh, sorry. Both of y'all uh, give me an alertness check. I'm sorry, were you talking to me? Uh, oh, no. Both of you there. All right, what am I making a check for? Sorry, I had to step away for a second. Zero one, that's pretty good. <laughs> critical. It says critical, it's not critical, it's, is it? It's, it's not a critical because I treat zero zero yeah. as a critical, not a zero one. But that's and I me. benefited from that rule, I remember. Yes, you did. But that's just me, that's not a standard rule. I just like, it's always doubles unless it's a zero one. I just get rid of this unless clause. Uh, one second, sorry. Thirty-nine. Okay. You both find something. Um, Greg, since 
yours was actually the more obscure thing to notice. I'll give it to you. Um, like I said, this thing's got a lot of graffiti and that sort of stuff on it. There's a circular patch about chest high that, you know, about three feet across that A, has no graffiti on it, and B, the rock actually looks like it's been cleaned, almost like it's fresh. I mean, there's no stains on it. There's no moss on it. There's just a nice, clear, almost perfectly circular patch of rock at about chest height. Is it high. smooth? Like, is it, is it completely plain as well? Um, or does it look natural? If you feel it, it actually feels gritty, like sandpaper almost. And as you rub your hand, there's just parts of it are crumbling off, like you're rubbing sandstone, not granite. Is it like is it like the circle has been polished out of graffiti? Like is does it is it cut into the graffiti or is it in a separate separate area? Uh, it's it's actually you can see it it cuts off graffiti. It looks like someone cleaned off the graffiti in this one circle and scrubbed the surface of the mountain in this one circle. Give me a physics check. All right. Okay, it, it's really weird, especially since the rock is, there's something wrong with the rock here. Uh, maybe someone, like, clean, put acid on it? Can we, like, chip away at it? Like, uh, you know, like, could we, like, you know, if we... You can, you can dig parts of it away with your fingernails. Yeah, put it in a, in a bag. Uh, evidence bag or something to have it checked if it's the same kind of stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I take a photo as well. Okay. Also, Sharon, while Greg was looking at that, you found something lying on the ground. Okay. It's, what is it? It's a USB stick with, huh. a, with a symbol on the side of it. I will. Okay. I'll grab it. Okay. Is it like a symbol that I would recognize? I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, some kind of like, uh, like, you know. Okay, you should see it on your, um, in your handouts now. Yeah, it's like a bird. <laughs> you fucked oh, up, bird. It's like a bird yin yang. <clears throat> is it? Oh, yeah. That's weird. It is. Okay, I grab it. I, pop, I, I I show it to Greg, and I'm like, "Check this out. This is weird." And I throw it in the I throw it in the evidence bag and another evidence bag. <laughs> it, it's on a stick, you said. It's a USB stick. It's a little oh, USB stick. USB. Right up my alley. <laughs> you know, one of these little things. Uh, I know what a USB stick is. Okay, I'm not that old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not a floppy disk, I cannot recognize it. Um, you can put all of AOL on it. Yeah. We obviously picked up the USB stick uh, with gloves and stuff. Okay. Um, but these, that this looks, um, what's it called? Um, you know, that could be, is the symbol uh, somehow related to the Enlightenment things? No, we didn't recognize. Nice well, it. you know, a yin yang symbol could be a could be uh, mm -hmm. probably uh, in like important information on it. I mean, Sharon, you're the hacker. I don't even know where to stick these in. <laughs> That's what he said. I start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! The the joke really killed Ape. Oh, okay. <laughs> Back to Gene and Jackie, I guess. Hey, sorry. I don't know what the hell happened. Yeah, that joke kicked me off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, all right. I mean, can we, um, can I, uh, 
I mean, what are we gonna do, Greg? Do you want to go back to the car? Because then I can, or do you want? Let's check out the. Let's check out the, uh, um, the parking lot. And see. Oh wait, we already did, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think what we should do is no, you wait for you, Harry. you. You went to the main booth and then and got the list of all the people who were here, and asked. We didn't go walk around. You didn't go walk around. So can we can we like do that? And get a fast forward. I'm looking for anything specifically, like, you know, A, we'll look for the symbol, and then anything that's particularly, you know, crack potty or... Um, well, crack potty depends upon your definition of crack potty. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can find... Anything that was like, you know, uh, you know, basically anything that's related to spontaneous human combustion, okay. sort of like alternative, like, you know crystal energy rays or anything like that? Well, you can find all kinds of things here. It starts off from the more or less mainstream stuff like chiropractic, hypnotism, that sort of thing. Goes through massage therapy, acupuncture, aromatherapy, homeopathic medicine, crystal therapy, you know, acoustic therapy, you know. Uh, there's somebody selling um, sensory deprivation tanks here. Oh, wow. So it's one of the more new age stuff. There's nothing that really yeah, it's, stands you, out. You like, see, you know, is there any like organizations like, you know, Heaven's Gate or something like that? Uh, nothing that you see like that. Um, okay. Mostly these seem to be people advertising their, a lot of authors with their books. There's actually a couple of people selling music. Um, there's the one guy selling t-shirts, um, which seem to have nothing to do with anything here. Um, but then you pass by one booth. And on the banner over the booth is that same bird yin yang symbol on the USB stick. And it defines itself as the raven and the dove crystals. Well, well, well. <clears throat> what do we have here, Sharon? Uh, why don't you let me handle this? I look. I could probably pass off more of the new age than uh, <laughs> old top. Greg looks at his plain uh, like suit. Well, probably. Well, actually, you know what? Never mind. I mean, you have like all the. You, you can read people's bullshit. So. Yeah, but uh, you can read people's bullshit from afar. Uh, right. I think you you you've got a good idea, Sharon. Okay. Do you want to do you want to cut there, or do you want? Or is it, do you, can we keep going, or do you want to keep going? Um, well, what's the other team doing at this point? Well, uh, he's coming over to do the body right. The, um, right. Oh, that's right. Y'all are still waiting for the autopsy. Yeah. Um, yeah. the autopsy actually does not, well, does not find anything more unusual than you've already found. Yeah. yeah I, I figured as much. It just um, does a... It's you know, hard. I feel like we'd left it hanging if we hadn't. It there's. It's hard to do a toxicology report because most of the blood is gone. What he is able to get from, you know. What's weird is that it's almost more damage the deeper into the body you'd go. It's like the surface of the body was the least affected. Um, what little he can get from like the mouth or the heart or anything like that. There's no sign of any narcotics or drugs or anything like that. Um, there is no evidence on the skeleton of trauma. Um, no. Th he wasn't shot or stabbed. He wasn't hit. Um, they can't tell whether there was, you know, it's impossible to tell if there was any bruising or anything like that. They can't tell mm -hmm. if he was suffocated. Um, you know, he didn't drown. Okay. There's no fluid in the lungs. Yeah, yeah. So he's not. He's a. Uh, he's yeah. We know no more. Uh, but I we mean, ruled out there's. Like, I mean, any kind of. He's ingested something or whatever. Really. Yeah. You, you know? basically ruled out anything possible. There's also, again, he confirms there's no evidence of any accelerant or anything on the body. Mm. Um. I would like to volunteer for a sanity roll at <laughs> the detail of this whole thing if that's appropriate because <laughs> it's like you know this is a body that was burned out from the inside and uh yeah well you already knew that and you've already made your sanity check for the body so you're fine 
Okay, sure. Now, now, uh, now what, um, your, your player sanity check, you're on your own for. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I think uh, I ask, uh, you know, I look at the paperwork and um, his possessions, like his belongings, you know, that were taken yeah. off him, his clothes, he had a phone or... Yes, you can go through that. He was wearing a. Um, you can go through. He was wearing normal clothes. He had like was wearing like a polo shirt and jeans. The polo shirt had the um, Eastern Horizon Security logo on the breast. He was also wearing a nylon jacket that said Eastern Horizon Security. He had his phone and a radio and a flashlight on him, plus his you know wallet and that sort of stuff. Yeah. He was unarmed. At least there was no weapon found with the body. And are Eastern Horizon security expected to be armed? Uh, depends on where they're assigned. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, but the phone is probably sent to the police station, right? Uh, yeah, the, the phone was taken to the police station. They had, yeah. The GBI well, has the phone. We should, yeah, I was thinking... Uh, we can get a, a lackey or something to drop the phone off with Sharon wherever she is. Cause yeah, like you, you, can, you can arrange that. for that. Um, give me a bureaucracy check just to see how fast it happens. Uh, Jackie, you're pretty good at bureaucracy, aren't you? Yeah, I, you get good at it when you have to deal with university administrators, you know, research IRBs and everything like that. So, yeah, let me make that call. Actually, we're both as good at uh, bureaucracy. Can you? Uh, I've got bureaucracy at 60, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just roll for it. Man. I mean, that's what I mean. It makes no difference. Okay. There's they'll, a success. Yeah, they'll have someone run it on over. Nice. Uh, well, Jackie, I... I think... It's time to interview... Uh, Mr. Van, Mrs. Vanderman, who found the body. Yeah. Um, should we uh, bother to have a word with our Canadian friend about the cause of death? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, finish, I'll get him to finish up this paperwork. Make sure he notes it as something non-unusual. We're going with yeah, fire. <laughs> that works. Uh, Heat exposure of some sort. Uh, and yeah, we'll go speak to Mr. Obertine. Landro. Oh, wait. Landro is the um, coroner. Oh, is his name Landro? Yeah. Albertine uh, Landro. Lambro. Ah, Obertine Landro. Landro. Yes. Uh, well, thanks for uh, for pushing us up your schedule. We'll let you get back to things now, Mr. Uh, yeah, Landro. That's fine. Man, this is a this is a weird one. I don't even know how I'm going to write this one up. Fire? <sighs> yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, it's going to make sense, right? Yeah. What What else could it have been? I mean, gee. I don't know, but we'll, you know, we'll get to the bottom of this. Uh, I really appreciate if you could tidy up, you could get that paperwork filled out as fast as possible. Uh, send uh, yeah. that one over to the office. Sure, and, sure, uh, we can do that. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, sorry, I, I really apologize for bumping you up. You know, we just got to get this closed as soon as possible. Yeah, that's fine. But man, this one's weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, smile winningly again and, uh, you know, uh, shake his hand with a warm grasp. Uh, and then, um, you know, hopefully that was enough to convince him to rush through this paperwork and get the official story filed mm -hmm. with just a broad fire kind okay. of thing. Um, yeah, so I, I guess uh, find uh, Miss Vanderman and uh, okay. you know, make a statement. Um, she was in the night shift, so she's going home. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get her apartment. Mm -hmm. Head over okay. to her apartment. Okay. So you um, head over to the apartment. Yeah, uh, bring her uh, some donuts. Okay. Okay, you get there, uh, knock on the door, and it takes a while before she finally answers it. 
and she's standing there. It looks like, you know, she just threw on some clothes real quick and obviously half asleep and she's going, yeah, what? Hi, Mrs. Vanderman. Uh, my name's uh, Agent Oliver. Uh, this is my friend, uh, Miss Taylor. We're, we're here to talk to you about, uh, well, about, uh, what's his first name? Kenneth. Oh, God, um, Kenneth. Yeah, look, um, yeah, look, they said that, um, you know, you know, Kilpatrick said that, um, Deputy Kilpatrick said that, you know, they, uh, they were done with me and I could go home and go to sleep. I mean, what is this? You know, I, I, I don't want to think about this anymore, okay? You know. I, I understand entirely, Miss uh, Vanderman, but we, I know you went for it with the deputy, and I'm sorry, but, you know, we have to go through it as well. <sighs> okay, okay, fine, okay, come in, sorry. Okay. Don't you worry about us at all. Okay, fine. We're intruding on you here. Do, do you, pass, do you, the, I pass the donuts. Okay, uh, okay, fine. Do you want a drink? I've been drinking. You... <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll, I'll have one. Do I need to make a check on that because of my alcoholism? Uh, yeah, you're being confronted with it, so you need to make a sanity check. Okay. I should go when the players ask it. you if they need to do checks as opposed to you asking them or telling them to. Hey, we're all in this together, right? <laughs> I was going to wait and see whether you took it or not. <laughs> oh, failure. Okay, you will you will just take it. Um, she grabs a couple of beers and hands both, both of you one and takes one herself. And she says, yeah, I know. It's just, God, poor Kenneth. Hey. Uh, I, you know, I raise the bottle and I just, uh, you know, and I say, yeah, uh, I take a sip, you know, just okay. the tiniest little sip, just to kind of, uh, try and put her at ease and just, you know, uh, okay. uh, from the way she's talking and acting, this is not her first one. Oh yeah. Well, loosens tongues. I'm not, I'm not unhappy about yeah. that. Yeah. So she sort of shift some stuff around and you get the impression she had been sleeping on the sofa she's now sitting on before you came in and she's going yeah I mean damn I mean I met his kid last night you know um, they only have the one car and his wife was dropping them off just as I was there getting in and um, he introduced him to me you know he, he's got like a five year old kid I mean, I mean, he didn't smoke. I mean, it's not like he set himself on fire. Can you just walk me through uh, exactly what you saw? Uh, when Did you see Kenneth at any other point in that night? Or did you see any other strange things? That, you know, anybody out of place? Anything at all? No, we just did our check-in. Um, we, um... You know, they with it with some of the newer ones. Um, they just had us just on the outer area. We weren't down near where all the tents and everything were, where everything was. They just they were concerned about having people, you know, hang around the park at night, and they just wanted to make sure nobody was trying to camp out in the woods or something. So they just have people like us just walking around, you know. And it was it was a quiet <laughs> night otherwise. I ran into this one drunk guy. I mean, he was, um, I mean, it was about, maybe about 30 minutes before I found, you know, he was wandering around and he was really drunk. He, he, he kept asking me if I could see them or if I could hear them. Oh, is, and I realize this is splitting a hair here for you, but is it possible he was on some kind of drug as opposed to being drunk? Well, yeah, I guess, but, you know, they a lot of people here drinking. They have the bars down at night. I figured he was some guy who had gotten drunk at the, but, you know, they, they kind of keep an idea, uh, you know, 
Well, they don't care if you're smoking something, but you know they do keep an eye out for something more than that here. Could you this, uh, uh, this gentleman yeah. who you? Uh, how did you deal with him? You direct <sighs> him out of the park. You take him out. Yeah, I escorted him back up to the um, main park, main building, where um, and yelled for someone there, and they were gonna go kick him out of the park. I mean, he he, he probably got drunk and walked over. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I understand, uh, Miss Vanderman, but it's just, if you'll bear with me for a second. You, when you handed this, ma this man over, did somebody take him? Uh, yeah, we, we handed him off to, um, as he quickly looks for his notes. Mm -hmm. um, we handed him off to um, uh, Officer Davis. Um, he's one of the um, Stone Mountain Police that's assigned here. This man, could you could you describe him for us? Uh, white guy, blonde, kind of young. Any distinguishing marks? Tattoos? A scar? Uh, not that I saw in the dark. I mean, like Did I said... Did he wear glasses or anything like that? Yeah, he had. He was wearing glasses, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sanderman. And so, you ran into Officer uh, Metal, well... Mr. Metal checked in, right? And then at some point in between you finding after Miss, Mr. Metal's last check-in, you bumped into this person, uh, and then you discovered the body. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I guess I found this guy was there about 15 minutes. I found him about 5:15, about 4:15, uh, and then I um, five. I found him about. 4.45, I think? Would yeah, about 4.45, and then I found um, Metal about, um, Kenneth about 15, about 30 minutes later. Okay. And when you found Mr. Metal, there was, you didn't pass anybody else? You didn't see anyone else? You uh, didn't, no, that uh, was the only guy I saw. Did you know it was Metal beforehand? <sighs> no. Honestly, honestly, I thought somebody had, you know, one of the food vendors had dumped their um, food cart back here for some reason. Uh, and I, I I imagine she takes a big swig of a drink yeah, of that. And yeah, and it wasn't, and I was actually thinking that I was going to have to call in a cleanup, and then I got close and saw that it, he was wearing the, he was wearing his um, shirt and jacket. And Mr. Metal hadn't been working here long, had he? He was new? Uh, yeah, they um, they hired some people just to work this shift. You know, they're still expanding here. Look, I mean, I'm I'm just wondering. Uh, you know, was he was he did he associate with any of the uh, you know the vendors, the staff here? Was he? Uh, no, we we're, we're here at night, not during the day. Of course, they're not going to give us the day shift. You know, the new people, but you know, night shift pays better anyway. So you know, good. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I, I started a couple of weeks ago. I just, he's been with them about a month, I think. I only know him because we're on the same route. You know, they just, I mean, they hire temp people like us just when they have a trade show or something to work. And how's that been going so far? Well, until this morning, it's been going pretty good. I mean, walk around for six hours at night, get paid a hundred bucks, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't expect to actually find anything. I mean, good lord. In fact, they told us that if we saw anything, just to back off and call it in. And you're not armed, correct? No. No, 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 no. I okay. mean, I am, but I, they wouldn't even let me take mine. Um, I understand. Well, uh, thank you very much, Miss Vanderman. You've been, uh, you know... Uh, and I pass my card and I say, if your bosses are giving you any trouble with any of this, you give me a call, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. They, they say they understand, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I put my full bottle of beer next, down next to Jackie. Uh, <laughs> as I go to leave. And I will pick that bottle up and quickly down it. Okay. I mean, since I failed that test, it, do, I, do, do I lose sanity for that as well? It's not that you lose sanity, but it's just that at this point you are, 
you're giving into it at this point, so you're pretty much at minus 20 on everything right now until you get yourself back under control. Um, okay, I completely misunderstood that then because uh, when I looked at it, it, I, I thought it says I minus 20 on all tests if not indulged addiction in 24 hours. Um, is, um, that, is, that, is that a typo or something that got it? Okay, uh, that's my quick from the book. Now that you've now that you've fallen into it, if you don't indulge, you're going to go into the negatives. You're right. Okay. I just I wanted to make sure that I understood how that worked. Um, well, I may not be understanding it correctly too. I won't swear to know the rules perfectly. <laughs> I, that's okay. So feel free to call me if I go. No, you're doing that wrong. I uh, listen. I still, you know, I've been reading the stuff that you've been sending us. Honestly, I still need to crack open that uh, the shrink wrap on the slip case. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I. Okay. So it's if you fall into it and you don't indulge, it's minus twenty percent. Okay. Okay. And I, I think the idea is that, you know, you're you're an alcoholic, right? So the more booze that's available to you, the more you might. And obviously, being a federal agent, drinking on the job and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nah. It's okay. And. and Plus, it also plays into the trope of functional alcoholism, where yeah. if you don't have any anything, you're just like you're you're rocky. And if you do have a little bit, you can oh, manage. If yeah, you're okay. drinking, you just keep remembering Peru. <laughs> right. Well, that was okay. the point of it. We'll um, go that way. I, so let's. I I think I'm done with Vanderman. If um. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that seems like uh, everything. Is there a role that's needed here to double check? I, I feel like she was an open. She was, um, Jackie will know for certain, she was pretty drunk at this point, which means she was actually at plus 20% for saying anything. Mm. And, and I have like 70 in Persuade. Yeah, well, I so. wasn't going <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to get the information out of her one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, what time are we looking at? In I mean, time? she's, uh, let's call it noon by now. Noon. Um I think uh, meeting back up with the others um, uh, and, you know, we can split up from there, but we need to speak to Officer Davies, it sounds like. Uh, and we have this, we have the security guard's phone as well with yeah. Sharon and whatever. Yeah. And this USB stick, right? And right. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. The, the um, Let's go back yeah. to okay. Who are we need to go to next? Well, I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the booth and. Uh -huh. uh, oh, that's right. You're over at the booth. Right. I'm going to. I'm just going to pretend to be a fanboy. And then okay. you know, uh, I'm gonna, so I'll walk up to the booth. Uh, what kind of stuff is there? Obviously, crystals. Crystals. Yeah. Uh, they seem to have a lot of geodes. And um, a lot of their more elaborate. Some of them are just like. Pe you know what a geode is, right? Yep. Okay. Um, a lot of them are just um, cr the crystals in the semisphere, you know, semispherical stone showing. But then they have these more elaborate things where they're mounted into mechanisms where lasers are being fired into the crystals and reflect refracting out through them. And they have them set up to act like prisms, reflecting s sunlight onto surfaces um some of them appear to ha some of the larger crystals appear to have patterns etched onto them um microscopically etched onto them or even in them inside of them obviously using laser systems all right so i, I, I kind of i feign to fawn oh my god these are beautiful how do you how do you get how do you do this what's the oh. process oh Mr. Chatan is a um, artist. Um, his art is crystals, and um, he's very excited about these. He can u tune them to your personal um, vibrations so that they vibrate in sync with our clients, and they can make you calm. They can give you happiness. They can enhance things in the bedroom. You know, it all depends on what you want. Uh, 
many of these are generic, but you know, we do personal work as well. So I could get a late. I'm sorry. So is it the is it the crystals? Is it the lasers? Is it the pictures or the things that are engraved on the lasers? What? How does that? They all build upon one another. It depends on how um, much you're willing to um, invest in art. The crystals by themselves, just their presence, um, causes um, vibrations around them. By firing the laser, we actually spread those vibrations into the air, where they reflect, and those vibrations are now broadened over their area. By adding carvings, we focus the effect of the crystal. We can make them more powerful, and then we can combine all of them together to make, you know, so we can expand the effect of the vibrations from just a small area around the crystal, like the one you wear around your neck, to a room or even a house. Really? Yes. Oh my God, this is incredible. I, I, I would love to, um, I would love to, to get a uh, personalized crystal. Oh, Mr. Chatan would be um, so happy to hear that. Um, we've been getting so many commissions from this. I mean, we really appreciate, um, we really appreciate Mr. Harris for creating this opportunity for us. I mean, we have our store here in town, but you know, there's only so much you can do for word of mouth and, you know, it's it's hard to publicize this type of business except for word of mouth. And this has brought us so many new clients. Yeah, I love this fair. Whenever I come down, as soon as I hear, you know, every year I try to come down. This is a, uh, the first time I've run into you before, but this is, uh, you know, oh, this sounds revolutionary. Oh, here. And she reaches under the counter and pulls out a USB stick and hands it to you. And says, here, um, if you have a computer, you can go through this at home. It's basically our catalog. Um, you know, we, we try to be environmentally conscious. We don't want to give you a stack of paper that you're just going to throw away and litter. So, you know, this is a, um, this way, you know. And, and feel free to share what we have on there online. This is a important thing. Absolutely. It sounds very important. So w when can I come, or should I come to your store for a consultation with uh, Mr. Shannon? Yes, that would be the best. I mean, like I said, he was here for the first day or two, but now there's so much business. Though he'll be here tonight for the laser show. Oh. Yes. Is, is he in charge of the laser show? Uh, he helped design it. The one They're running a special laser show for the convention here, and because of his work with lasers, he's worked, he and our programmer have worked with... Um, you know, okay. have worked with the authorities here, and they've been more than happy to let us have, you know. Do you do that laser attunement with crystals during this, or is this just like a light show like uh, Laser Zeppelin? Uh, well, we, we couldn't get the crystals to work with their system. He wanted to do that uh. at first. But we are, we, you know, we do use our audio cues. We do use our um, laser patterns, you know. It's designed to enthrall the audience. It's here, it makes them enjoy their time here more. It makes them happier and they go home feeling reinvigorated and refreshed. And that's what all of us need these days, isn't it? Absolutely. But to be at the end of the day when you're going home after a day, you're not tired of all you did that day. You're refreshed and excited and looking forward to the next day. Oh my God! I have a very high pressure job. I think this is just what the doctor ordered. Oh yes, you sh you should come. It'll be after dark, which means to be starting around seven thirty tonight. Okay, thank you. I will. Uh, perhaps I will bring um, my partner. Oh, certainly. Uh, he's a bit of a stiff, so if I see, you know, so if he seems like, uh, you know, like a doubting Thomas, don't worry about him. He's he's harmless. He's a real sweetheart. I'm sure. Time. I'm sure. Well, please, here, thank you. You, Did you have one of the, Oh, yes, I gave you a stick already. Yes, yes, thank you. I, I will uh, take a look at this at my earliest convenience, and I'll come, to, I'll come by the store to set up a personalized uh, um, crystal experience. Yes, he would love to see you. Listen, she leans forward. 
Ask him to show you the quantum. Ooh, that sounds remarkable. Is it? Is that something that's like uh, that's, extra? That's his latest invention. That's his latest discovery. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you. We'll be back tonight. Uh, hopefully, I'll yes. see you. Yes. Give her her treat. Sorry, I'm getting questions about my dog. Um, uh, no problem. Okay. Um, yes. So you go on about your way. Um. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, I think that's a wrap for now. <clears throat> um, if you tell that to Greg, then Greg will say, um, "I think we need to stop the the laser laser show tonight." Um, what if we, I mean, how are we going to know what it does? If it does anything? Dude, we have a person that is cooked and we have a quantum laser and we have Greg is thinking if we, if there would have been a line between the laser, the body, and then the wall where we found the, um, the, the spot on the rock would that be a straight line uh it's below into the right i mean the laser the main laser display would have been far above it and i mean technically you could aim it at this but it would probably be firing through trees so so if i mean greg will probably um suggest to go back to the spot at the rock and then try to to find a straight line to the fun fair whatever it's called uh if that would be the the tent of the the crystal people the the dove and the raven or i would like to or a straight line to wherever the, the laser yeah. is exactly um actually you can't track a straight line to either one um the, I mean, it's a narrow path of the trees that you have to be standing at the right spot in order to see. Um, can I do some science? Physics. Um, right. With physics, you can look at the map and you can't see. Technically, you can draw a line between them, but it looks like it's going through trees in both cases. Actually, the, uh -huh. one, from, the one from the tent is going through buildings because the um, shopping area is between it and the um, where the tent is. The, and the trees are okay? What? They don't, the trees don't look worse for the wear? No. Like you got irradiated or something? Nope. I mean, it could, uh, maybe it's not the laser. Maybe it's the quantum thing, whatever that is. Maybe it is, you know, not optical light, but some kind of other waves that fry them. Okay. Maybe Should we I don't have to stop the, the laser show. She also mentioned a programmer, and I blew it, and I didn't follow up on that. So, um... Well, should we meet up, you know, like, after you guys have, uh, we come back yeah. to the thing? Yeah. Yeah, I think we should meet up and compare notes and everything. I mean, I now I assume on the USB stick is just, um, you know, the, we, the we meet in the We meet in the car park, right? Like, yeah. we, we park up next to you. Uh, mm -hmm. and and we, we can park like in uh, in the wire, like door to door. <laughs> <laughs> I, because we're both do... FBI. Come on. Yeah. I'd like to do just like I had a couple of things that I wanted to do search for, like you know, deep dive on. Okay. Um, um, okay. Uh, I mean, you know, just quick roll. Uh, just the I guess Raven and the Dove. See if I can find anything about Mister Shatang or Raven and the Dove. Okay. Uh, give me a. Give me your computer check All right. to see how much you get. Twenty. Twenty. Okay. Um, okay. First things you can find the really easy stuff. The Raven of the Dove is actually listed as a bookstore. It is located in the downtown Atlanta area, in an area known as Five Points, um, which is the, um, you know, the 
ur not the urban area, it's the bohemian area, shall we call it, <laughs> of town, you know, where all the microbrews and the artists and that sort of thing are. Yeah, the hipster area. Um, it's classified as a book stop, bookstore, but they also list that they sell crystals, crystallography, and aromatherapy. They also say that they do art. You know, the Raven of the Dove is owned by a name, man named Nicholas Chatain. Now then, that's the easy stuff to find. Uh, Jackie, give me an anthropology role at this point. All righty. Wow, there's a failure. Okay. Um, you will get one thing. Um, Shatain is a Middle Eastern word meaning Satan. <sighs> Meanwhile, Sharon, um, you were able to find out something about Nicholas Shatain. Uh, Nicholas Shatain's real name is Andrew Perillo. He's Italian. Um, he's gotten into trouble several times as a con artist, uh, snake oil salesman. Basically, he was selling um, uh, crystalline energy attuned water and selling it for uh, purposes of curing um, cancer, curing asthma, curing COVID, curing whatever you want to do. It was a general all-around cure. He could use crystals to align water. He was selling this stuff online through Amazon and that sort of thing until they finally caught up with him. And um, basically, he avoided jail by paying a lot of fines. Um, he went underground for a while and um, popped up again um, in Atlanta selling he had been living in Colorado he popped up selling um, crystals in Atlanta uh, since then he has spread out a little bit um, and using the name Nicholas Chatain he has spread a little bit he's not only selling crystals he's also selling aromatherapy products um, um, his real name was um, Andrew Perillo. Thanks. Um, he's been very careful not to ascribe any actual medical uses to anything he's creating now, more as mood and sensation amplifiers. They improve your mood. They make you happier. You know, things that the FDA has no definition for, and therefore you can't say that it's not working. And after all, the placebo effect is a thing. All right. Uh, anything out of the USB? Which USB? Both. Okay. The one you got at the booth is exactly what it seems to be. It's actually an animated presentation talking about the store. You see Chetain himself, um, a picture of Chetain himself in there talking, and he discusses all of his crystals, and he goes into a long theory about vibrations and quantum effects and its effect on the mind and that sort of thing, and goes into a lot of detail about how by using the laser on it he can expand the effects of the crystal from the crystal itself through the entire room and how the carvings focus the crystalline energy and how by using different crystals with different focusing they can produce different effects you know they can keep you you know make you feel more alert they can make you feel happier they can fe make you feel less stress they can make your certain sensations more pleasurable you know that sort of thing what color hat does uh, Andre Frillo have? Um, here, I'll show him to you in just a second. If my click will work, there it is. Oop, wrong one. There he is. 
It's not blonde in my glasses, then. That's a shame. It's a handsome cuss. What's on the other USB, then? The other USB um, only contains a file that looks like some... You don't recognize the format. It looks like a control system for some kind of, the best you can think is a CNC machine, possibly a 3D printer of some kind. And I don't recognize it? You don't recognize it. Is that just because it's like an industry that I don't do anything with kind of thing? It seems to be for something you're not familiar with. Okay, can I, uh, can I hit the Googles or, or whatever my secret NSA search browser is to kind of track down like if there's schematics or code or anything like that beyond the fact that it is some sort of industrial it's code running some sort of industrial machine or running something but you don't know what the something is I mean there's very precise instructions for movement and changing angles and that sort of thing. It's moving things and orienting things in three-dimensional space, but you can't tell what it's designed to control. All right, I think... Tell me if, I this, mean, is, tell me if this is metagaming, but, you know, I think that it's, you know, it's like a, a CNC router or laser etcher, you know? It could be. That's that's my hunch is that it's some sort of laser control. It 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 looks like something like you would use for like I said for a 3D printer or CNC machine. It's just that you can't tell right exactly what it was being used for. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And All right. the, and the file is just something like qz0008. Dot, you know, pln. Uh can we just it for prints? Uh sure. Uh, I mean, uh, Jefferson, do you want to show show us how it's done? Of course. And uh, forensics to get the forensics or criminology to get the prints. Um, I think forensics is marginally better. Okay, you got your you get the prints. Um, yeah, I guess we got to run those uh, against um, you know dead man uh, Andrew Perillo. Uh, okay, his, his prints will be on file, Andrew Perillo's, of course. Right. Um, the dead man's will probably be readily available because they've just been done for the initial investigation. Uh, actually, they couldn't. They have it from when he signed up for. They took his prints when he went to work mm. for. Um, but they, they couldn't get it off the body, of they course. They couldn't get it from yeah. the body. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, so this uh, Shatami guy, he's Shatame. shady. Shatame. Yeah, I bet uh, Gene is uh, <laughs> deliberately mispronouncing it as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, I mean, we need to look closer at him, right? But, uh, there's another could be nothing but the witness uh, saw some intruder possibly she thought was a drunk man uh, handed it off to an officer Davies of the local police yes uh, I was thinking I'd follow that up okay uh, I have a, a out of game question uh, do are we supposed to um, recruit people if we think that they are um, you know capable and have experienced supernatural stuff you can do that yes it falls under the if you were absolutely sure it falls back to when they were talking about your um contact at the gbi they said do not confide her into anything unless you're absolutely sure you can trust her the way I, the way i would understand it is if that if they directly encounter something supernatural yeah try and get them on board <laughs> is the uh and instead of talking you know yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about the Canadian doctor because mm. he obviously experienced like this weird shit uh, and also kept his cool. But yeah, but let's uh, you know, let's not. Go, I, I would suggest let's not go chasing um, random NPCs to our party <laughs> when, we, when we've got the case to solve. Right? Like, Talking about random PCs, so that do we have the drunk guy and Agent Oliver or Officer Oliver? Yeah, um, so Officer Oliver should have should have some. You know, he's the best lead on this guy, right? If he's a police yeah. officer. You're, I don't know, man. You're Oliver. Um, Davis is the name of the officer. Yes, oh. Davis. Oh, sorry. Um, I think the more like pressing thing is the the quantum death race. They just called it the quantum. They didn't say anything beyond that. Oh Christ, Greg! Look, the body was fried. Come on. Yeah. But... At least we're not talking about like brain waves or something. This is just physics, right, Sharon? Yeah. It's like, I mean, if it's cooked from the inside, it's a microwave. It could yeah, be. Or... Microwave would have worked, yes. Or it's magic, or it's hypergeometry, or whatever the hell they said, or it's uh, spontaneous human combustion, or there's a perfectly rational explanation for all of this, but let's find <laughs> out, right? Like, rather than operate on the basis of not knowing anything. If, if you're right, what does it change? Well, if it's right, we know that Shaitan is the guy. Yeah, but okay. take a run at Shaitan. Shaitan. Yeah. Shaitan. Because, uh, you know, you know his name. He's Andrew Perillo. Uh, he's got a, a record. You can make. He's not going to like a couple of FBI people coming up on his door, and you've got that over him. I mean, you know, maybe send Sharon and I. I should stop by a local yoga studio to get an appropriate costume. <laughs> <laughs> some some Lululemon pants, and you know, it's something like, oh wait. Let's go get some henna, some like some temporary henna tattoos on our hands. Nah, because then if somebody sees us elsewhere, it's evidence. <laughs> but there is a henna tattoo place at the show. If you, <laughs> of course. Look, Sharon, we can blend in really well, and with my background in archaeology and anthropology, and your background in really weird stuff, I think we could probably get him to crack, and just start spilling stuff without him even knowing. Uh. Jackie, you're not bringing the, the magnum, are you? Or whatever it is that you carry? He might be impressed by it. New Age Gunslinger. Mm -hmm. And I start laughing. Um, um, but, it, but it's not loaded. I shoot bullets of truth and light and healing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. With, well, my, with my human, can I see that Jackie is back on the stuff. Uh, we, we will assume. You can probably smell it. I mean, it's not like she has had a lot. But... No, no. Now, um, one quick thing, uh, Greg. After you got the fingerprints, mm -hmm. um, roll bureaucracy to run the fingerprints. I mean, you just have them. You need to look them up now. Let's go. Bureaucracy is my jam. And again, you will get the answer is just how fast. 60 on the nose. Okay. Um, you get, just because they're both recently in the system, you get a hit back almost immediately. First, it is not Madal. However, it belongs to someone named... Uh, Carl Schneider, who was arrested that morning for being drunk and disorderly at Stone Mountain Park. Oh. That is interesting. He was, oh, he was arrested, but we don't know if they let him go. That is what we will find out, hopefully. Was he perhaps arrested by an Officer Davies? It doesn't say who the arresting officer was. Oh, okay. On the reports you have, it just no notes <clears throat> that he was arrested. He has a ver he has a today arrest warrant. Okay, so I would suggest uh, Jackie and Sharon do the woo woo stuff, and Gene and I do the police work. Sounds good to me. Uh, okay. Sharon, are you gonna? 
keep things calm, Zen. If Jackie steps out of line, I'll laser her, okay? Listen, Gene, I'm... We were on the clock. Okay. okay. You know, the, the the clock was running. I... Okay, Jackie. I made sure everybody else had deniability. Like, I covered your asses. And okay. then I went and did what I thought needed to be done based on my instincts. And I'll, I'll, if... I'll try to keep it quiet if I have to do anything or if I feel like I have to do something. And I'll try to check in with Sharon to see if Sharon agrees. Is, is that fair? Yes. If Sharon says so, it's fine. Okay? Okay. Okay. We're also coming up on time here for today. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to have to put a pin in it at this point. Um, like I said, I will be... I'm skipping next week because of the Easter holiday, so we will come up in two weeks. I need to get that on the schedule. I also understand that some of you may not be able to make it next time. So we will just bring everyone up to speed then. So for right now, uh, this has been what I am calling the Heart of Stone. And we will see the rest of you next time. Thanks so much. This is great. I'm having a great time. Yep. Glad you're liking it. <laughs>